reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit, and every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Since August, I have been coordinating the outdoor worship for this congregation. And since November, that has meant facilitating and setting up for a 10 a.m. Eucharist at the Old Armory Pavilion, where a significant number of parishioners and visitors from St. Peter's gather each Sunday morning. Now, our setting is rather bare. Card table is the altar, and our music stand serves as the pulpit. But on Good Friday, I decided we needed a cross. Funny I hadn't thought about it before then. Because on Good Friday, the cross was an important part of the liturgy. So I found some battered and misshapen and worm-eaten wood from the community garden next door, nail the boards together, and that old rugged cross was processed in the Good Friday liturgy out at the pavilion. And we have used it ever since. Indeed, we have taken to calling it our COVID cross. Now, as I was setting up for the Eucharist last Sunday, I noticed that our cross was missing from the storage shed where I had been keeping it. After a brief search, I found it, piled high on the garbage in the dumpster, the victim of an overzealous cleanup effort, I'm sure. Misshapen as it was, worm-eaten with a portion of its base worn off, it was very easy to miss its meaning, miss what it was. Appearing to the casual observer as just a useless couple of boards taking up valuable storage space. But since then, that old battered rugged cross has become increasingly for me an icon of God's love that we are often too blind to notice. And when we do, we reject it as being at best unrealistic and at worst masochistic. In the epistle this morning, the author says that God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God in them. In the Gospel reading, Jesus invites us to abide in that love so that we might bear fruit, that our lives will have a distinctiveness that comes from beyond ourselves. I am the vine, he says. 
you are the branches. Now there are at least two serious misunderstandings of what is being said here, I think. Two intellectual, emotional, spiritual obstacles that must be confronted. Or we will, in one way or another, clean out that old cross of our lives and toss it in the garbage heap. First, what is the nature of love? Now, our culture assumes that love is about warm and cozy feelings that make us want to reach out to that person that generates those feelings in me. We talk about the involuntary nature of love. I fell in love, love at first sight. And yet, Scripture speaks of love as a choice, an act of the will, not an emotion. Jesus' life, the incarnation of God's love, what divine love looks like in human form, that love was a life of self emptying, celebrating, culminating in the cross, a choice Jesus made of obedience. Divine love is sacrificial. Abide, live that love, says Jesus, and you will begin to bear the fruits self-sacrificial living, the fruits of divine love. The process of self-emptying or dying to self is not easy, and all too often that trash pile seems the appropriate place for such foolishness. Now the second obstacle of misunderstanding is that most of us imagine that we are the source of that love. That the fruits we generate are the results of our own goodness or self-determination or hard work. And we should get credit after all for what we produce. Scripture and Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me, says Jesus, and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Wait, wait Jesus. What about my successes in this life? What, what about my awards, my trophies? One of the deepest spiritual truths is that like the moon generates no light of its own and can only reflect the light of the sun, so the fruits of faith Hope and love are gifts, gifts of God, and cannot be created by you and me as much as we would rather think otherwise. Sit long enough with that wisdom, and that dumpster is beginning to look increasingly attractive as a place to put this ridiculous assertion. But the spiritual truth is that the more we begin to understand this, the less we will be tempted to spiritual arrogance, self-righteousness, and judgmentalism. 
And the more open we become to the transforming, life-altering power of grace, the more joy-filled our life will be. Grace, freely given, never earned. And the more we begin to touch that joy of Jesus that he wishes to give us. The deepest truth is that the things that are most important in this life are gifts. And our deepest calling is to be an instrument, a vehicle, if you will, for a love that comes ultimately from beyond ourselves and is infinitely more than I can create on my own. Thus the journey of our lives at the deepest and truest level is to grow in the capacity to receive that love and in the capacity to share that love. But how can we move then from self-absorption to self emptying from self-righteousness to the joy of grace. Abide. Abide in love, says the epistle. Abide in me, says Jesus. I am the vine. You are the branches. Hear Jesus say, friends, Hang out with me for a while and see what happens. When I teach a Bible study, I tell folks that they shouldn't try to squeeze meaning out of every single verse. Rather, give yourself time to simply sit with Scripture. Scripture that's either deeply meaningful or terribly puzzling and unsettling. Just sit with it. Take a verse or two home with you, I say, and marinate in Scripture. Marinate in the words, even if they have no easily discernible meaning. Marinate in the word. Abide. Hang out with Jesus. Now abiding in love, abiding in Jesus means making time so that you can just sit. Just sit with the sacramental presence of the church. Just sit within the fellowship of other branches of the vine. Find time in the quiet moments when you can marinate in Scripture and allow the spirit that is too deep for words to bring prayer to your lips. And because we so easily forget, remember that abiding in Jesus means hanging out where Jesus has promised to be found in the poor, the vulnerable, and the forgotten. It is abiding in Jesus, abiding in the grace that comes to us in spite of ourselves, we begin to understand how deeply we are loved. This is my body, says Jesus, and gives us bread. This is my body, says Jesus, and gives us one another. And as our capacity to receive love grows, so too our capacity to make the sacrifices that self-emptying, self-sacrificial love 
requires. And the possibility of being an instrument through which a greater love than mine can flow becomes something I can no longer resist and actually begin to be drawn to. That old cross of discipleship will always be battered and broken. Such is forever the life of obedience. But it will not be destined for the garbage heap. It will be what we cling to with all that we are and all that we have. Amen.